Hi, I'm Sal McCagalano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, former Merchant Mariner, and an adjunct professor in maritime industry policy. And welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping? China's going to get coal in their stockings for Christmas. And that's not a bad thing, because China needs a lot of coal. So we've been talking a lot about container ships, and that has been really the thrust of a lot of our discussions. But today I want to introduce you to another side, a topic that we've broached on just a little bit, but probably need to talk about more, and that is bulk ships. So again, we've been talking nonstop here really about containers for good reason. There's a lot of news about container ships out there. Uh, this is G Captain right here, and all the news media sources have the same thing. Lots of stories about this. Here's Maersk encouraging just in case supply chain model. No longer just in time, don't count on just in time, but now you have to plan on just in case, which means basically you need to stock up, buy more goods, and have them in your warehouse. Uh, the mad spree for obtaining container ships is full bore. Uh, MSC is chartering everything they can get their hands on, the Mediterranean Shipping Company. Meanwhile, uh, NOOs like C-SPAN are just building ships like crazy. They have just announced financing on 45 new builds. And I have to say, this is an amazing story in itself because they talk about exactly how they're doing the financing, uh, something they don't usually talk about. Uh, these shipping companies will pool money together, kind of like a stock venture, and put it together. And this story actually talks about it because C-SPAN is actually talking about this, how they're concluding the financing, putting it together. One of the things, just real quick before we get into the bulk trade, because I think this is just absolutely just insanely interesting here. Uh, they said in the second quarter uh, for 13 of the vessels totaling approximately $1.3 in sale leaseback financing arrangements, the vessels have an aggregate purchase price of approximately $1.4 billion. They're expected to generate that $1.4 billion is going to generate $2.7 billion of gross contracted cash flows over the duration of their long-term charters, which begin in the fourth quarter of 2021, so the end of this year, through the first quarter of 2024, so roughly three and a half years they will get not just their original money back, but over that. And they are financing like crazy, but that's not the story. I don't even want to talk about the fact that HMM is ordering more ships. That's not what I want to talk about. The story that struck me today was this story. This is a story in Splash 24-7, China to build 100 million ton coal stockpile this year. Number one, China does not talk about anything that they don't want to talk about, but here they are talking about this story. It's a brief story. They're, they're Splash 24-7. They're usually fairly brief stories. Uh, uh, Splash 24-7 is quick, right to the point here. But this is an interesting story. The China's National Development and Reform Commission has announced a plan to build up around 100 million tons of deployable coal reserves this year. And then here's the quote. It is extremely rare for the Chinese government to make statements on building up coal reserves. This adds to our bull bullishness for the dry bulk market shipping market and seaborne coal market, com uh, commented uh, Jeffrey Landsberg, Managing Director of Commodore Research and Consultancy. Goes back down here a little bit. China's power plant stockpiles are down year on year by about 25%, while coal-derived electricity production this quarter has been rising year on year by approximately 10%. At the same time, domestic coal production has stayed under government-mandated pressure as accidents and deaths in coal mines have continued to occur in recent months. Coal port stockpiles in China have now fallen to the lowest level since February. So understand while the rest of the world is getting themselves off coal, China uses more coal than the rest of the world combined. How do I know that? Right here. What's fueling China right here? And this handy dandy little graph right here shows it to you. The red is China. The blue is the rest of the world. And you'll see right here where China basically surpasses the rest of the world, basically uh, eclipsing them and overtaking them. So China has this voracious need for coal. Uh, that coal comes from a variety of different places. One of the most important places it gets it from is Australia. But China and Australia have been involved in this very nasty trade war between each other. It goes back to the beginning of COVID and it has gotten worse. The Western side of Australia is nothing but basically mining areas and bulkers load up with coal and haul it to China. China doesn't make disagreements with the nation unless it knows it has a plan and reserve, and they do. Uh, and that plan and reserve is Africa and South America. That's where they're looking to derive their money and their coal from. 
So China's always prepared for that. And that's what gets you to uh, this story yet. No let up in dry bulk shipping, remarkable rally. So while everybody's talking about containers, and even I talk about containers a lot, I, I admit I do that. The dry bulk market is insane because you don't usually see rallies in both these markets right here again this is from freight waves american shipping dominates a uh, container shipping dominates the headlines but it's in its shadow dry bulk shipping is posting its best first half in a decade and that is true dry bulk which is notorious for abruptly losing momentum is still going strong and they talk about the three different size vessels here the cape size vessels these are the big vessels that go around the cape of good hope uh too big to go through the Suez, but more importantly, they're really coming from South America. They're carrying around 180,000 deadweight tons. Uh, they rose to 33,300 per day on Monday. So this is the rates for chartering them. Panamaxes, which is basically the, the maximum size that go through the Panama Canal, uh, earning 32,800 today. And then the Supermaxes, which are the smaller vessels, 31,600. And this is the chart that's really just amazing to me. So if you look at this, there's this gray area here. That's the five-year high-low. So that's basically where it, within five years it falls in that scope. The dark blue line is 2020. This is for Cape size. Here's your Panamax, and then here's the smaller Supermax. And then the light blue line is 2021. Banging high. I mean, just peaking here above everything. Maybe the Cape size are the closest here, but definitely seeing that and if you go down here in the story even more they talk about all the positive sides and then they come here and they look at the dry bulk stock since november of 2020 and they look at the major firms right here you'll see them all right here so you get euro dry safe bulkers star bulk eagle bulk golden ocean ginrod and jenko and all of them all of them showing basically pluses and and right here euro dry is up 614 percent over where it is and this is the movement of dry cargo, a really important element to move. We're talking about coal, we're talking about iron ore, we're talking about ores, we're talking about agriculture, grains coming through. All of that is vitally important. There's a story back in April about ag prices just soaring alongside bulk ship rates. Uh, this was in G Captain, uh, it was a Bloomberg report that talked about that. And the thing to watch when you look at this stuff is the Baltic Dry Index. The Baltic Dry Index which is really the measurement scale for determining rates for dry cargo is really interesting. So here's the Baltic dry index right here. This is a link to it. This is off, I think this is off uh, in trading economics right here. You see how the Baltic dry index here is basically up at the same level it had been since May, up quite a bit since January. Uh, if you go to the one year, Definitely a high, definitely seeing a peaking up here. And if you even go to the five-year high, you'd sit there and look at that five-year high. It's like, man, look at that. That's that thing is banging. If I if I bought, you know, back in 2020, started investing, this is really good. But you got to be careful because one of the things that people don't tend to do is look at long term. And the best time for shipping in recent history was prior to the crash of 2008. That's prior to the crash of 2008. Look how high it was. Shipping was 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 just absolutely banging high every element of it in 2008 and then the global economy crashed and we tend to think of it as a, a mortgage a, a, your home but it was a global recession you look at what happened in 2008 uh, one of the few times you ever see global shipping decrease was was a result of that and that is off the cliff right there that's off the cliff with no bungee cord at all uh, that's pretty bad and basically what you're seeing is trying to recover back up to that level that we were before. Now we're higher than the years prior to that, obviously, but you see those spikes going up and then that massive spikes right there. So I, I think this is a really interesting story. Again, why is China trying to do this? China cannot afford for its industry to go without power. And that's a key thing we're talking about here is Chinese power. A lot of people will look at what China does and put military overtones on it. Oh, this is China being expansionistic. This is China. The new Cold War is, is out there. Understand, China is deathly paranoid of being cut off from natural resources. China, the size of the United States, has only 8% arable land. It needs food. It needs raw materials. It needs fuel. It needs oil. It needs coal. It needs everything to keep that massive economy going. And what they are terrified of is being cut off from that. They're terrified that a nation or a blockage will prevent that going. That's why, again, China was so bullish when ever given when a, a ground in the in Suez, they had already 
figure this out. This is their whole Belt and Road Initiative, where they're developing string of pearls, these ports all around the world, these different trade routes. And if that doesn't work, they'll go overland through Central Asia. And this is all part of a global trade network that China is working on. And again, if you really want to see it in operation, don't watch the container ships, watch the bulkers. Because if you watch the bulk market, this is what you see. Now, bulk ships are extremely dangerous. Uh, we've seen multiple wrecks. These are probably the most dangerous vessels out there on the high seas because of the cargo shifting. Because of the fact that it's bulk cargo, especially ore with that irregular shape, uh, cargo can shift. The whole vessel can heal over. It's not unusual for these vessels to just to founder uh, and, and to be lost at times. Extremely dangerous vessels, but the large majority of the world's Cargo moves on these. Used to be oil tankers, now it's bulk carriers. We're literally picking the earth up and moving them in ships. That's what bulkers do. So anyway, I want to introduce you to this topic. We'll be talking more about it as news comes up with it. But again, a, a absolutely uh, vital piece of, of economic trade on the world's oceans. Uh, I'll also caveat myself too. I am not a stockbroker. I'm not an investor. Don't take stock tips from me. Please don't take stock tips from me. I'm just giving you all a insight in what's going on in world shipping. Uh, again, this is talked about within world shipping circles. Uh, it, it, bulkers don't even talk to container ship guys. Container ship guys don't talk to bulkers. It takes a historian and a person who teaches market industry like me to look at it, analyze it, and put it out there in a way that we can all understand. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is Sal Mercaglano. If you enjoyed what's going on shipping, be sure to subscribe. Go ahead, hit the thumbs up to get the video uh, so you can share the videos with others and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. And Peanut hears my doorbell going off right now. So this is Sal signing off.